Where are we today in World Traveler? There's your first hint. It's a graceful canal lined by trees, and here's a huge royal palace right in the middle of town. And there's a lot of quick hints for you. And I know by now many of you have already identified the city, but for the rest of you, we'll give you another 30 seconds to figure it out before we tell you where we are in this great cultural capital. Another big hint, there's boats, there's tour boats that cruise along in the canals. And of course, obviously, we're in Europe. There's a lot of hints for you there, a lot of fast high-speed hints. Just a little preview of some of the delectable scenes coming up in World Traveler. We're going to have a one-hour exploration of this beautiful city. And here's a whole bunch of fast hints coming along at you again. There's street markets, there's beautiful restaurants, there's houseboats that some people live in. Population of the city is just over a million. We're not in Scandinavia, we are in Northern Europe. Have you figured it out yet? Well, I'm sure most of you have, so let me tell you where we are. This is Dennis Callan for World Traveler, taking you to Amsterdam. This is one of the great cities of Europe. It's an amazing place, rich in history. It's got a very vibrant, contemporary cultural scene. There's beautiful tree-lined canals. There's buildings that date back to the golden age of the 16th and 17th century here, when Holland was one of the most powerful countries in the world. So we're going to show you this city from its canals to its museums, its restaurants. We'll take you on a night boat cruise with some candlelight and wine and cheese. And we'll walk the narrow back streets of Amsterdam. Come along on this episode of World Traveler. Amsterdam is a fairly compact and well-planned city with a great history, and we will show you much of it in today's program. The Dom Square is the center of town, the new church on one side, the royal palace on the other side, the Dom Palace. The queen still lives in here several days each year, but otherwise it's mostly for rituals and ceremonies, and the public is welcome to come inside. Behind the palace is the old post office, a grand building that's been converted into a shopping center. It was no longer needed as a central post office taking up that prime real estate in the middle of town. And in one of the finest urban conversions ever conducted, you see this splendid shopping mall now. It was originally constructed in 1889 and draws its inspiration directly from the Dutch Renaissance. And yet there's touches here of the Gothic and the Romanesque. There's elaborate pilasters and stone sculptures and ornaments, and you can buy a small version of Dutch architecture in the stores. Here's a sample of some of the many things that you might like to purchase while you're visiting Holland. Get some wooden shoes, maybe. Get some chocolates, some cheese, little windmills. There's a whole variety of things to buy in this country. For those on a big budget, perhaps some genuine royal Delft porcelain dating back to the 17th century. You can find genuine antiques. And how about some diamonds? This industry was first established in Amsterdam during the 16th century. And today, Amsterdam is still one of the major diamond centers. So you can get some good deals here. You can tour the diamond factories if you're so inclined and see how they cut them and you'll get a tremendous variety and selection of diamonds of all sizes and shapes and prices. The canals are the heart of Amsterdam. You'll find spending time walking along the canals, perhaps with a guidebook, looking up at the beautiful architecture of the city is one of the main joys of being in this town. You don't have to spend a lot of money here if you don't want to. Just sit back at a cafe, have a drink, watch the people, the Anne Frank House is one of the most popular attractions in town, so if you're planning to go there, you can figure you'll be waiting online for 30 minutes or an hour to get in, probably on a normal day, but it'll probably be worth it to you. The home where Anne Frank hid out as a young girl during the war. Most of Amsterdam is preserved just as it was built hundreds of years ago. The interiors of the buildings have been modernized and brought up to date, but this city is one of the greatest museums of living architecture to be found any place on the planet. It is just standing as it was back in the 1650s and 1680s when Amsterdam was at its peak of power. The canals form one of the great pleasure centers for the local residents as well. It seems like every other person has a boat 
and they invite their neighbors to come out for a little cruise. You'll find the pace of life in Amsterdam is very slow and peaceful and tranquil. Part of this has to do with the fact that cars are not allowed in the center of the city unless you live there and have a special permit. Otherwise, people get around by boat, by bicycle, and by walking. It's a small town, so you can easily see Amsterdam on foot in a couple of days and get a good feeling for the layout of the city. The Jordaan is one of the more interesting neighborhoods you'll want to explore. And here the landmark is the West Church, built in the 18th century. It's the tallest tower in the city, 272 feet high. And it has the largest nave of any Dutch Protestant church. It was built way back in the 1620s, and it holds the grave of Rembrandt, although nobody knows exactly where he's buried in the church. And a guide will lead you to the top of the bell tower. On the left is the first floor and there's a little wooden stairs that leads to the second. If you wait for me there, there's where the tour will start. From then on we'll make our way slowly up into the top of the tower. It was built in 1631. The tower was completed seven years after that, in 1638. The carry along is played by hand, and how does the man play on it? He plays on it by hammering with his fists on these wooden parts. Uh, he cannot really play it like a piano. Now we have a new one, and it can be found on the ninth floor, so that's where we'll be going there. Okay? It's quite an adventure to climb the highest tower in Amsterdam up that narrow wooden staircase and enjoy the splendid views of the city laid out below us. And at the top we get an amazing surprise. There is a fellow playing the bells, and it's a special occasion because his teacher is retiring. And she's standing out on the street listening to him play. He's been studying for seven years now, and this is one of the grand moments of his studies to play a concert for his retiring teacher. So let's give a listen to the bell ringer in the West Church. standing outside and about a few minutes I must play it for her. It requires a special training, I think it's five years or not. Five years, yeah. I'm in the seventh year. You're in the seventh year. Seven. Seven. Long stadium, low, low tempo, eh? It's well worth the rugged climb to get up and down this narrow wooden staircase to enjoy the view, and especially if you're lucky enough to find a bell concert. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m. there's a scheduled bell concert, and sometimes you'll find them at odd times of the day, as we were lucky enough to stumble into on this visit to the West Church. Hotel Pulitzer is one of the top luxury hotels in town. They've taken over about 24 canal houses and converted them into a five-star deluxe hotel. It's located on the central canal ring along Prinzengracht and Kaisergracht canals. Getting hungry? Working up an appetite? How about some Indonesian food? It's the specialty of Amsterdam, the Rishtafel, which means rice table. 
and our waitress is going to pile it on. Beef in spicy uh, coconut sauce. Green peanut sauce. Uh, chicken. Sweet pork. Spicy pork. Vegetarian satay with the uh, fried corn. Eggs. <laughs> Soya beans. Beans and babu shoot. So that's vegetarian also? Yes. When you're in Amsterdam, one of the finest meals that you can have is the Ristafel. As you can see, there's tons of food, so let's dig in and eat. The restaurant Special has established a reputation as one of the finest Indonesian restaurants in Amsterdam, and the price is right in this restaurant. It's located on the Nivea Liliestrat. There's the kitchen cat. He's just waiting for the morsels to come his way, patiently sitting by his bicycle. The restaurant Special is located in the same neighborhood as the West Church and the Hotel Pulitzer. It's quite central, and the Indonesian food is just really, really rich with flavors. The cuisine comes from what were the Spice Islands, and it harkens back to the days when Amsterdam was in control of Indonesia back in the 17th and 18th and even 19th centuries. We'll take you to several more of the best Ristoffel restaurants in town a little bit later in the program. We're going to also be showing you some museums and generally showing you the sights of the city. It's like a moving painting. I noticed this couple on the bicycle. He's pedaling along and his lady is sitting on the back. This is the style of transportation in Amsterdam. You'll see couples out on dates like that on a bicycle or two girls or two guys riding together that way. Also getting around by boat is a very popular means of transportation in the city. And just generally hanging out, sitting at a cafe, sitting at the canal front terrace and watching the boat traffic go by, watching people pedal by on their bikes. It's a very casual outdoor kind of town and the weather is fairly mild throughout half the year anyway. You don't want to come to Amsterdam in January or February, then it does get bitter cold and the winds blow in off the North Sea. But otherwise, especially from April through October, it's a great city for being outdoors. There's a little Chinatown with Japanese and Chinese food available. You'll see tour groups coming through. This is a very popular city for tourists. There's five times more tourists coming through the country than actually live in the country each year. In front of the main train station, there's a very busy network of tram lines and buses. There's a wide range of accommodations to pick from in Amsterdam. It's always best to plan ahead, but if you've arrived in the city without a room, go here to the central station. The main train station has a big hotel reservation office. As you can see, it does get pretty crowded, but you can wait online here and they will fix you up with a room. Central Station is one of the architectural landmarks of the city, built in a grand Victorian neo-Gothic style. And it stands on a special island that was built at the foot of the main street of the city. Amsterdam has grown up considerably from its origins as a small fishing village at the mouth of the river Amstel. Probably first settled about the year 1200, it was a low-lying land of swampy marshes and rivers, and they began digging these canals as a means of draining the land, and this happened way back in the early part of the 15th century. The canals expanded, dams were built, walls were constructed around the city. This fortress-looking structure you see called the Vog was one of the gatehouses in the early wall around town, and then it became converted into a guild hall kind of like a union house where different trades groups would meet together. And now it stands empty waiting for some kind of redevelopment, but around it is a very lively street market that happens every day. There are bicycles everywhere in Amsterdam, chained to the railings across the bridges. There are 500 bridges in the city, and there are 90 islands that make up the town, carved up by the canals that wind in a U-shape 
with four main concentric canals and side canals connecting them all together. You'll find a lot of public art in the city. Throughout its history, Amsterdam has been a supporter of the arts. The main square is called the Dam because this is where the River Amstel was first dammed. In the middle, the unsightly obelisk is a war memorial. The first dam may have been built as early as the late 13th century. Near the Dom Square is the University District. Its bookstore are housed in an arcade that's been selling things for 200 years. It was the entrance, formerly, to a poorhouse for old men. One of many graceful squares in the University District. The campus was established back in the late 19th century in the heart of Amsterdam. And currently there are two universities in the city. People of Amsterdam are very well educated. One of the top five-star deluxe hotels in the city is the Grand Amsterdam. Although it's only been open since 1992, it's housed in a building that was constructed in 1661. The building served in a variety of purposes, including the Amsterdam City Hall and as a royal guest house. And now it's been converted into this grand deluxe super hotel with its own private garden, very popular with locals for weddings and other such functions.